Hello and welcome to my exploding GIMP text effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and this tutorial is going to be mind blowing. So check out this design. This is what you're going to create today. When you're done, you'll know how to add a texture to text, how to create motion blur, how to create dust particles and more. So are you ready to master this exploding text effect? Awesome. Let's do it. All right, let's start off by creating a new document. Go up to file, select new. And for the width, we're going to do 1920, the height 1080. And then for the resolution, let's set it to 300. I also want to fill in the new layer or the new document with black. So set your foreground color to black. You can do that by clicking on these two little squares right here or just select it from here. Next, come down here to where it says fill with and select foreground color. And now we need to add a layer mask to this layer. So a layer mask is key to this GIMP text effect. Without it, we wouldn't be able to do all the different motion blurs that we're going to apply to the particles that we create. So let's come over here and click on this icon and make sure it's set to white to add that layer mask. Next, we need to add the texture for our content and the dust particles. So grab the file that I provided. Go ahead and download it if you haven't done so already. Grab it from the folder where you downloaded it to, click and drag it over to the document and it will automatically be added as a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this layer name and I'm going to name it Texture. It should also be below this background layer. So let's click on this icon to move it. I'm gonna grab my zoom tool and I'm gonna hold down my control key to zoom out. And that's going to reveal the layer boundary for that texture layer. It's much larger than the canvas. So let's resize and rotate it so it fits inside of the canvas. We're gonna grab our rotate tool first, which is this tool right here. Keyboard shortcut is shift plus R. Just click on your canvas and type in 90 and click rotate. Next, I'm gonna come over here and grab my scale tool. Keyboard shortcut is shift plus S. Again, I'm gonna click on it. And then under width, I can type in 1920. And because I have the width and height locked together based on this icon right here, it's going to automatically resize the height for me after I click scale. Now let's grab our move tool so we can move that layer into position and I can just use the layer boundaries here to eyeball it. It doesn't need to be perfectly inside of the canvas because our text is going to be smaller than that anyways. Speaking of, let's go ahead and add our text. Grab your text tool. And for the font, I'm going to use Montserrat Heavy, which you can download from the link below, or you can use any other font that you want. I recommend a heavy, thick, bold type of font. So for the size, I'm going to do 200 and I'm going to change the color to white. So I'm gonna type out exploding, and then I want to center this content directly in the center of the document. So we need our alignment tool for that, which can be found over here in our toolbar. You can also select it with the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter Q. Now, before you can actually align the layer, you need to activate the layer with the alignment tool. And you can do that by clicking anywhere inside of that layer boundary. And you know it's been activated once you see these little squares in each corner. Now come over to your tool options and select relative to first item and then align with this icon here for horizontal center and vertical center. All right, next we are going to make a selection of our letters. So we're gonna come over here to our exploding layer, right clicking on it and selecting alpha to selection. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my zoom tool here so we can zoom in a little bit. And we can see that all the letters are now selected. We don't really need this layer anymore. We can hide it if we want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and move it down or you can delete it, it's entirely up to you. 
Next, we're going to select our layer mask right here. Then our bucket fill tool because we want to fill in the color black inside of the selection because when you apply black to a layer mask like this, it's going to remove the edit or that part of the layer and anything below that layer will begin showing through. So go ahead and click and boom, we have our texture showing through. How cool is that? I love it. All right, I'm going to come up here to select and select none to deselect. All right, I'm going to grab my zoom tool again with the letter Z. And I'm just going to zoom in one time so I can get a better view of my work here. So now we're going to begin applying brushes. I think there's five or six different brushes we're going to use for our explosion text effect. So let's come over here to our brushes and select our first brush, which is acrylic O2, which is this one right here. Next, we're going to go over to our tool options and make a selection. But first, we need to grab our brush tool, which is right here in our toolbar, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter P. So the key to creating this explosion effect is variations of the brush application. If you apply the brush exactly the same size, angle, etc., it's going to begin creating a pattern and it's going to look unrealistic. So what we can do is we can come in here and change the size of the brush, the aspect ratio, the angle, the spacing, the hardness, the opacity, every time we want to apply a brush, or we can use the power of GIMP brushes that will automatically do this for us as we're painting. So to do that, we're going to come over to the dynamics option right here. Click on this icon and choose confetti. Now with this dynamic turned on, it's going to automatically resize the brush, the angle, etc. as you use it. So watch my brush when I bring it out and begin moving it across the text. So as you can see, it's beginning to change size and angle. It's easier to see if it's larger. So that's the key to creating a realistic explosion. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the size down. Now this is a starting point. You always want a starting point and it's going to create a variation of that size and the angle according to that brush size. So sometimes you need to adjust the size based on what you're trying to achieve with that first type of brush application. So I think I'm going to go right around 100 here for the initial size and then I'll let the dynamics choose the alternating sizes. So make sure your layer mask is still selected. Black is set to the foreground color here. And then we're going to paint around the edges of the letters and it's going to begin revealing the texture below and it's going to look like dust particles are coming off of the letters. So I'm just going to click and drag across here and you can see the variety of the shape and the size of the textures as I do that. I can also just click in certain areas to add the particles more precisely this way. I'm not going to do too much because I want to be able to read the letters or the content. If I do too much, then the letters will not be visible or will be difficult to read. So I'm just going to go around all the letters here and apply this brush accordingly. All right, that's looking pretty good. I just want to alternate my brush or change my brush to something else and continue going around the text again to create some variations of the particles and what we're adding and removing for that explosion effect. So let's go to our brushes here and let's choose charcoal O2. I have a lot of brushes here, so I got to go through all of these. All right, there it is. That one right there. We're going to keep the tool options the same, maybe a little bit smaller on the brush size. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go around. Maybe not as much this time, just to add a little bit of variety. And if you do it on the inside here, you can see it's actually beginning to slowly remove some of that texture, which adds a little bit of depth. 
Okay, I did a bunch of strokes right here. I don't like those, so I'm gonna undo those with Command or Control and the letter Z. Or you can go up here to Edit and select Undo from here. All right, we have our first two brushes done. We're now going to duplicate this layer and start adding some dust particles and adding motion blur to them. In order to do that, we do have to duplicate and apply the layer mask. So let me show you real quick. We're going to click on this icon here to duplicate that layer. We're gonna turn it off and I'm gonna double click on this layer name and call it brushes one to two. And this one I'm going to name brush three. Right click on this layer here and select apply layer mask that removes the layer mask and commits the edits to that layer. Now we need to add another layer mask back. So come down here, add white again. And now we're going to apply another brush for our first set of motion blurred text so it looks like it's coming out of the text or the letters and it's beginning to move away from it so let's grab our next brush which is splat 2. Let's see if we can find it there it is splat 2. so for this one i'm going to bring down to let's try 150 and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click a couple times next to each letter above and below and the sides. So something like that. I don't want to do too much. Again, it's going to apply the adjustment with different size particles and opacity, and it's going to change the angle as well, which is what we want. We don't want it to be symmetrical. Otherwise, it's going to look unnatural. All right, now that we have that brush applied, let's go ahead and add some motion blur. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out first. So grab your zoom tool, control key, and zoom out. Let's go up to filters, scroll down to blur, select zoom motion blur. And as soon as you do that, you should see the particles begin to move away from the text. How cool is that? All right, so we can make adjustments here to change the center of the axis, the X and the Y. I'm gonna leave it set at the default. You can adjust the blurring factor as well to be less or more depending on your own creative vision. I'm gonna do, let's try uh, more than that. So I think for this first one, I'm gonna do something right around here. Click OK, and now we have our first set of motion blur, and it looks like the particles are coming or moving away from the text. We're going to continue applying a couple more brushes at different sizes to increase the particle sizes so it looks like it's coming closer and closer to you. First, we need to take this layer and duplicate it. Turn it off. Rename it to Brush 4 right click and apply the layer mask again and then add a new one so let's grab our new brush which is going to be bristles three so let's see if we can find that here it is right here all right let's go ahead and grab our paintbrush again with the letter p or just grab it from the toolbar so for this one i need a size larger than 30 so let's try something like that maybe a little smaller right around 235 and then for this brush we're going to apply it on the outside of these particles here and it's going to be larger so it's going to appear to be closer to us versus the first set that we applied and again because we have our dynamic setting set it's going to randomly apply different sizes and different angles of particles All right, let's go up to filters and right here we can repeat that zoom motion blur that we used originally if we want to or you can go back into blur zoom motion blur to make adjustments to the different options inside of here which i'm going to do i want it a little bit longer than it was previously so maybe 
something like that. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate our layer here again. I'm gonna rename it brush five. Let's apply the layer mask and add a new one. Let's also turn off this layer just below it as well. And we're going to do one more set of particles, much larger this time. So grab your brush tool and let's increase the size. Now let's add our motion blur. And I'm gonna go a little bit larger than the previous one. So something like that, that looks pretty good. And then finally, we are going to add a smoke brush to add a little bit of smoke. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer again. We'll go ahead and turn that one off and then apply the layer mask here. New layer mask, and then we're going to choose a smoke brush. I'm gonna go with this one right here. So smoke 14. This time in the tool options, once you have your brush selected, we're gonna come over here to dynamics and select dynamics off. And that brush size is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna come over here to maybe around a thousand. So something like that, I'm gonna change the angle as well. All right, so that's a little bit too bright or too intense. I wanna bring down the intensity of this brush and we can do that with our opacity. So when you lower the opacity of your brush, you're painting with gray versus solid black. So it reduces the effect. So I'm gonna undo that with Commander Control and the letter Z, and I'm gonna click right here again. And now it blends in a lot better. How cool is that? All right, so we have one more thing we need to do. We just need to clean up our motion blur, the dust particles coming off of the letters a little bit to make it look a little bit more realistic. So if you take a close look at the particles right here, we have a little crack here. And in the smoke here, we have a big crack right here. And that's coming from the texture layer here from below. So we need to blur that out so it looks much more natural. So to do that, we're gonna grab our texture layer. We're going to duplicate it. We're gonna go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we're going to increase this to, let's do five. And that gets rid of those cracks. Go ahead and click OK. The only problem is we lost the cracks inside of our letters too. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a layer mask with white. And then with our paintbrush, let's just grab a normal soft edged brush. And then in tool options, make sure you set your opacity back to 100. And then you can paint over the letters to bring back that texture. All right, now it's your turn to complete this text design project and to post it in our private Facebook group. To join our group, you can locate the link in the description below. Also, please support my channel by commenting on this video, liking it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out my GIMP text effects playlist that has over 20 more tutorials and projects on text effects. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.